I was born in Wales. Uh, I lived there until I was 18. I moved to England to go to college and do microbiology, which is one of life's greater mistakes, for me anyway. <laughs> Uh, quickly changed to computer science, which in the long run brought me to the US, which was um, a goal since I was a very small child. I always felt that I belonged here rather than, than somewhere cold and wet. And so I moved here in 95 and, and took some photography lessons and learned how to see as an artist much more than I'd ever done. So having learned how to see as an artist, I quickly became feeling limited by what you can do with photography. So I decided to start to paint. And that was in uh, 2001. And uh, did some evening classes, and within two years I was starting to sell my work in a co-op gallery. I started with watercolor because I thought it was probably the easiest one. It struck me as to be the easiest one, not knowing which, one, which was easier. I painted in watercolor as a child. I'd also had um, uh, oil paints, the uh, paint by numbers as a child. And at, at that age, I went, we had uh, landscapes, we had cityscapes, we had seascapes, and I always thought, well, why no skyscapes? Um, so I thought watercolor was easier, it was less smelly, it didn't need an easel, you could work on a desk. So I took watercolor lessons, started there, and of course now I meet people say, oh, watercolor is the hardest thing. So I kind of worked going to things the other way around. I did watercolor first, then acrylic, then oil. They each have their strengths and weaknesses. There's things you can do with each of them that you can't do with the others. The refracted watercolors, uh, I initially call them watercolor collage. Uh, the technique is that I paint each sheen between one and 12 times, depending on the size I'm working to, cut it up and put it back together again. Initially, I called it watercolor collage for want of a better word. Uh, and nobody else seemed to be working in this medium, so I had free reign. Uh, I met some ladies who were quilters, and they said, oh, this looks like our, and what I thought they said was refractured quilting technique, when they said that they make a quilt three, four times, cut it up, and then quilt it back together again, which seems a little crazy since you've already cut it up a few times anyway. Uh, so I decided to extrapolate from there and call this refractured watercolor, which also differentiated from working with the leftover pieces, which were, I still call watercolor collage because they're, they're more like other collage where the pieces come together, collage from other places, although they are uh, pieces from my um, my original watercolors, but the refractured are different because they start from uh, a specific set or even a single watercolor of the same scene to be recombined as itself. Uh, one of the comments that I occasionally get at shows is, oh, this is what you do with your watercolors that don't work out. That's actually not true. Um, some of those watercolors with wet and wet, it is very fluid, it does its own thing. Sometimes I'm working with colors, other colors are faster. Some colors are faster than others, they just like psh, off the page. Some colors dry really quickly and before I get to them I either have to re-wet them or just give up. Um, I do do a lot of variations. Uh, you can see when you see the, the five or six that I'm painting that there are variations. You can see that it's the same dawn or sunset, but it's like uh, it's, it, there are differences in there. It's like taking six photographs of you uh, at different times of the day. You'll look a bit different every time. Different clothes, hair done a little different, stuff like that. When putting pieces together, I look for juxtapositions in clouds. So you have two pieces together where one cloud will kind of run on from one to another. And I always try and make sure that I don't put two pieces together that were actually painted together and that like cuts of each other. I'll put two pieces that are the same area from different paintings, I'll put them together, but I find a little cloud run on, and I find more and more that I will be able to pick up a little run on that's very, very slim in between one iteration and the next. And so one part of the piece will have this perfect little run on like I painted it, and then another part will make it apparent that those two pieces were not painted together. One of my uh, biggest inspirations is Dawn of My Back Porch. I always try and get up early to see what uh, what is going on before dawn. It's usually more interesting than sunset because living in the desert and also living near the Gulf, the Gulf of Cortez, our dawns are wetter, they're cooler, and so there's more clouds. So there's more interest there. I, when I have a get up and there's a plain day, just plain blue or plain beige, um, that's, that's when um, I go back to bed again. But if, uh, a gentleman that I met, uh, knowing that I specialize in dawns and sunsets or skyscapes, he pointed out that the Romans had 
a special uh, interest in the hour before dawn and the hour after sunset. They regarded them as holy hours that were separate from the rest of the day. They weren't night, they weren't day, they weren't part of either. They weren't uh, a joining of the two, they were just two separate pieces of the day. And those are the hours where you get the color in the sky that we all love. Some, there's been a couple of mornings when I get up, I was like, oh, it's already in full bloom. So I'm like running around the desert with my tripod. I, I shoot film to, to paint from because the colors are better. Um, and uh, so I'm running around the desert in my Uggs and bathrobe, literally with the tripod. Uh, there was one time a friend was staying with me and I was out there shooting this, this beautiful dawn and he comes out five minutes later with a cup of coffee. I'm like, dude, go back for film. I don't need coffee. That could be later. <laughs> Uh, I think it's odd that sometimes people ask me whether I paint plein air, and I say no. The dawn doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't stand still for me. Uh, some of my acrylics and oils, uh, some of the larger acrylics will take me two days to paint. Uh, oils, because of the drying time between layers, will take up to two to three months. Um, but I heard a story recently about a gentleman who uh, painted on massive canvases. Uh, he, he would put pots of paint all over them and put them behind a jet plane and just let the, the plane blow oil, oil paints everywhere or, or acrylics everywhere and then cut up the result and sell them as expensive paintings. And people would say, why do they cost so much? And he says, do you have any idea how much it costs to rent, rent a jet plane? So when people ask me, uh, if they, people challenge me on my prices, do you have any idea how much it costs to get the world to stay still while I paint plein air? <laughs> as a child, one of the prevalent art forms where I grew up was poetry. Um, the, the Welsh actually have a natural poetry, national poetry contest every year called the Eisteddfod. And that is uh, uh, an important part of the schooling is to learn how to read poetry, how to recite poetry, and also you're all encouraged to learn how to write poetry. Uh, when I was a teenager, I fell in love with Shakespearean sonnets, and uh, I, I do love to write them. Uh, I've written poetry on and off since I was seven years old. I've read poetry fairly extensively on the, poetry, on the LA poetry spoken word scene. And I kind of stopped writing when I moved to Salton City and started painting because I had no outlet for it. And for quite a few years I've been looking for ways of rekindling that part of my creativity and putting it into my paintings. Last year I came out with a po poetry and paintings book. And I also started putting small sayings in my acrylic paintings. And more recently, I've started adding not only sayings, but embedding entire sonnets into my uh, watercolor paintings. Uh, that they're added in after I've recollaged everything back together. Uh, I also put them, I kind of hide them in the clouds so that if you don't care for the poetry, you can stand back and ignore them. You have to be fairly close in order to pick up the fact that there's words in there. Yeah. I, have, I do write specific sonnets for the painting, yeah. The, in the book, the, 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 the uh, poetry doesn't necessarily go with the painting on the opposite page, but the sonnets I will write to specifically go to, to go in the painting. So the foreground of the work is put on after I have cut and recollaged everything together for the most part. I have one painting that I actually did the background and I specifically painted the foreground pieces and collaged them on. Uh, Dawn over Heather was done in a different way. Uh, that was an experiment that I liked, but I don't think I can do the, the Heather that good again, so <laughs> I go back to my original method. Watercolor. It's watercolor again on top of watercolor. Um, I, it looks like I've used black, but I actually mix my own blacks from uh, ochre, sorry, f from umber, uh, ultramarine, and uh, usually a little bit of uh, um, crimson in there. Uh, the reason that I use mixed blacks rather than my than black straight out of the tube is however much Krylon spray I put over it, it always bleeds through and I always get streaks. I just can't use that black because I would always sign in black, but I know I've, dis I've discovered I always have to mix my own black. The spray is for when I uh, am painting, and I'm, when I'm creating a, a, a refractured watercolor on a panel and I'm not going to frame it. Uh, I'm going to put an acrylic glaze on. Uh, I need, find I need to spray with an, uh, an acrylic spray. It's actually a, a PCP spray. Unfortunately, it's the least green part of my process, sadly. Haven't gotten around that yet. Um, otherwise, the, uh, that needs to harden. And otherwise, the acrylic glaze would rip up the watercolor because they're both water-based. So that's why I need the, the, the spray. One of the things I like about having the, the paintings out of the frame and onto the panels is when you get an oblique light across them, you can see the texture. With the acrylic glaze, you can touch them, you can actually feel the texture in the watercolor.
My, my next step, I discovered uh, a company who is making glues, recycled glues from recycled styrofoam. I'm looking forward to trying their glues, both as an adhesive and possibly also as a glaze. Um, I'm looking into methods of getting my, initially my acrylics onto three-dimensional surfaces. I have painted on three-dimensional surfaces, like I've done murals on signal boxes, I've painted on benches. I'm working on, on a way of getting my work into hung domes, uh, like uh, large um, mobiles for public art projects. Uh, whether or not I can work on with, with that method, with the refractive watercolor is yet to be seen. Uh, sometimes it takes, you have to make baby steps with different processes before you can bring the whole thing together. But certainly putting uh, poetry in the larger pieces is the next, one of the next steps.